Hi everyone, this is Virginia. In this video, we are gonna make cheesy bacon scones, or what I call Heather scones. They are my sister Heather's favorite scones that I make. I could make any other kind of scone, and she'll be like, oh, well, I mean, they're, they're great and all, but they're not the bacon cheese scones. So I dedicate these scones to you, Heather. We're gonna start by weighing out 240 grams of all-purpose flour. I'm a big fan of weighing my flour as opposed to measuring it. it makes it more consistent and accurate. Next is a tablespoon of baking powder, a tablespoon of sugar, and half a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna stir that up, make sure everything's distributed evenly. And then to that, I'm going to add 70 grams or five tablespoons of cold, unsalted butter cut into cubes. And using a pastry cutter, I'm going to cut that butter into the flour until it's about pea-sized pieces. So we don't need to worry about overworking the flour at this point because it doesn't have the liquid yet, but what we do need to be worried about is letting that butter come to room temperature and start softening too much and then it's just blending into the flour. Now we're ready to add 85 grams of shredded cheddar cheese, four slices of bacon that's been cooked and crumbled, 32 grams of chopped green onions, and we're gonna stir that up to make sure it's distributed because we wanna make sure to do as little stirring as possible once the cream is added. Now we'll add 227 grams of heavy cream and that should be cold. Now we're at the part where we wanna be careful about overworking this because the liquid is gonna activate the gluten. So the more we work it, the tougher it's gonna be in the end. So as you can see, it's still crumbly and that's okay. It's gonna to come together when we shape it. I'm just gonna turn everything out onto a baking sheet lined with a parchment paper. I'm not gonna be too particular about this. I'm just gonna eyeball and split this into halves. And I'm gonna work these into two patties, doing as little as humanly possible to get them to come together. And now that I have my two patties, I am going to take my bench scraper and cut them into six wedges. This is a super easy way to shape your scones. Another option would be to roll them out and use a biscuit cutter to cut round scones. Third option would be to scoop them with an ice cream scoop and make drop scones. So now that we have them cut, there's two ways we can go forward. We could leave them basically next to each other, maybe give them like a quarter, half an inch between for some airflow. Then that way they won't spread because they'll run into each other. They'll instead rise up. That will create soft edges if you like soft edges on your scone. I happen to like them crispy all the way around, so I'm separating them so that all of the edges get fully baked and crisped up. The next thing we're gonna do is glaze these with my janky broken pastry brush. Don't look. I'm using the heavy cream since we used it in the recipe, it's readily available. And this is gonna accomplish a couple things. It's gonna give color to them while they're baking. And then also it's gonna help the cheese and salt we're about to sprinkle on top stick. I have set aside about 57 grams of the shredded cheese. I'm just gonna sprinkle some of this on top. At this point, you could stick this tray in the freezer and let these freeze and then pop them into a freezer bag and save them and just bake them as needed. You would take out however many you'd wanna bake, let them thaw for about 30 minutes while the oven preheats, and then bake them as usual. What I'm gonna do though is go ahead and bake them all. So I will be putting these in the refrigerator for 20 to 30 minutes. That will allow the gluten to relax. And then in case the butter came to room temperature and might be even a little melty in a warm kitchen, that allows the butter to harden as well to ensure we have a nice flaky scone at the end. I'm adding salt because I used a low sodium bacon so it needs it a little bit, but if you're using regular bacon, you may wanna skip this step. So while these are chilling in the refrigerator, I'm gonna preheat the oven to 475 and then bake them for 15 minutes, but I'll start checking them around 12 to 13 minutes, just in case. We'll know they're done when they're lightly golden brown. They release from the paper, you can press on the top and it doesn't spring back. And then a toothpick inserted should come out clean. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen today. I hope you give these cheesy bacon scones aka Heather scones, a try and enjoy them as much as Heather and I do. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more mouthwatering recipes. Thanks for watching. I'm Virginia and happy baking.